In this final section, we put it all together in our section on program design. Here, we will describe how to take all the topics and implement them effectively into your exercise program. Throughout this section, we will describe some basic corrective strategies for correcting some of the key faults that were outlined in the functional screening section before describing some basic programming for resistance and endurance training. Finally, we will describe how to effectively distribute your exercise program throughout the week. Corrective strategies. The first step in implementing a successful exercise program is to address any faults that may be present during the screening process. The process of addressing faults is referred to as corrective exercise. The aim of an effective corrective strategy is to improve basic function and optimize overall quality of movement. We examine some key faults in both the upper and lower extremities that you may have observed during your assessment of posture and the overhead squat. There are various tools that may be used within your corrective strategy, including foam rollers and resistance bands. Foam rollers are useful to assist in mobilizing restricted areas, while resistance bands may be used during the activation of weaker muscles. Upper extremity. Here we present a sample corrective program to address common upper extremity dysfunction, as observed with upper cross syndrome during the postural assessment and with arms falling forward during the overhead squat. Note that this program is only a sample and you are not limited to the exercises presented here. This sample program aims to mobilize the tight or restricted muscles through the use of foam rolling and static stretching techniques for the upper back, latissimus dorsi and chest. Next, we aim to activate the weaker muscles of the middle back using a simple ITYW exercise and utilizing a resistance band for the scapular retraction exercise. Finally, we stabilize the entire torso and shoulder region using a push-up position plank with shoulder tap with the aim to reinforcing our newfound range of motion.
lower extremity. Here we present a sample corrective program to address common lower extremity dysfunction. Common faults that you may observe include lower cross syndrome in the postural assessment and knees collapsing inwards and a lack of depth during the overhead squat. The sample program presented here follows the same guidelines as with the upper extremity where we aim to mobilize the restricted areas and activate the weaker ones. The restricted areas to be mobilized include the quadriceps in the front of the thigh, the hip flexors and the ankle. Next, we aim to activate the weaker muscles of the glute by using a glute bridge and lateral band walks. Finally, we stabilize the entire torso and hip region using two plank variations, front plank with hip extension and the side plank with abductor raise. Both of these sample programs may assist you in devising an effective corrective program to improve your overall quality of movement. It is important to note that your corrective strategy may be used as a warm-up prior to resistance or endurance training.
resistance training, and endurance training. The next step is to devise a plan for the main element of your overall program. Programming for this section is dependent on your overall goal. Whether you are seeking to improve strength, increase lean muscle mass, or improve your overall aerobic fitness. Resistance training is a modality of exercise that is well known for its role in increasing strength, power, hypertrophy, and muscular endurance. There are many ways to design a training program, and many resistance training programs can be successful if they adhere to the training guidelines. You must ensure that your training program is progressive to ensure positive adaptations transpire. There are three basic workout structures to choose from. Total body workouts, upper and lower body splits, or muscle group split routines. In our sample program, we will illustrate an example of a total body workout, which involves using exercises that work all major muscle groups. This type of workout is very common for many individuals, from athletes to the general population. If you recall from the resistance training section, we must ensure there is balance with our exercise prescription. That is, there is balance between pushing and pulling exercises, upper and lower body exercises, and hip and knee dominant exercises. Intensity. We have already described the various load and repetition guidelines for the different types of resistance training. For example, it is recommended that when training for hypertrophy, loads corresponding to between 67 and 85% of maximum effort for one repetition are most beneficial. However, it should be noted that muscle hypertrophy can still occur outside the recommended load and repetition guidelines. Generally, the load will dictate the repetitions you complete, as there is an inverse relationship between the weight lifted and the repetitions completed. If you are completing a set of 12 repetitions, the intensity is likely to be on the lower end of the scale when compared to a set of six repetitions. Here we present three sample programs that are suitable for the beginner through to the intermediate and advanced trainer. Beginner, anatomical adaptation. The beginner should begin with anatomical adaptation, which aims to develop a foundation that will ensure they are prepared to train more intensely as their training progresses. This is an appropriate starting point for any novice. In this phase of training, we also aim to learn new movements and slowly increase intensity as you adapt and progress. Intensity for the novice trainer should begin quite low and gradually increase. Beginning with body weight exercises, or with an external load of 30% is recommended at the beginning. This can be progressed over time to 40% and upwards towards 65%. Using intensity or load that corresponds to a percentage of your one repetition max may not be suitable for the beginner. Instead, we can quantify intensity as light, moderate, and heavy. Light corresponds to a load you can lift for 15 repetitions before failure. Moderate corresponds to a load you can lift for between 6 and 12 repetitions before failure and heavy is a load that you can lift for between 1 and 5 repetitions before failure. Here we present a sample anatomical adaptation program suitable for the beginner using the modified loading protocol. We begin using light loads and body weight before progressing both the exercises and loads. The duration of this phase will vary However, four weeks would be recommended as a minimum. Intermediate to advanced, hypertrophy. The sample resistance training program presented here illustrates a total body workout focusing primarily on muscle hypertrophy. Note there are three sets of 10 repetitions to be completed for each exercise at a load of 70%. Interset rest is limited to between 30 and 90 seconds. This means after you perform 12 repetitions, 
take 30 to 90 seconds rest before completing the next set of 12 repetitions. Advanced, maximal strength. If you wish to shift the focus of this session from hypertrophy to strength, the repetitions, load and rest all need to be manipulated. Note in the attached table, the repetitions are equal to or less than six and the load is increased to 85% or greater. Interset rest is also increased to between two and five minutes to facilitate full recovery between sets. Rest intervals. Rest intervals between sets will vary depending on the type of resistance training you are performing. Hypertrophy requires shorter rest periods of between 30 and 90 seconds. This is because the goal of hypertrophy is to exhaust and stress the muscle in order to facilitate the desired adaptation. Strength training, on the other hand, requires you to lift much heavier loads to achieve gains in maximum strength. Utilizing longer rest periods of between two and five minutes will allow you to lift these heavier loads for the desired amount of sets and reps, thus allowing you to maintain the ability to produce maximal force or strength throughout your session. Endurance training. Endurance training elicits many important health benefits and should be included in your program in some form. There are many different forms of endurance training, such as cycling, running, swimming, or circuit training. Unless your goal is to specifically improve running times, for example, then it is not necessary to use running exclusively as a means to improve overall cardiovascular endurance. Other modalities may also be used. Endurance training can be divided into three elements, steady state, continuous cardiovascular endurance, interval training, which is also a form of cardiovascular endurance, and circuit training, which primarily elicits local muscular endurance. Interval and circuit training are quite taxing on the body and should be used sparingly to facilitate adequate recovery. On the other hand, low intensity aerobic activity is likely to be the least stressful method and can be used regularly throughout a training week. Here we present a sample cardiovascular endurance program. You may choose your preferred exercise mode to perform this program, be it running, swimming, or cycling. Session one consists of low intensity continuous aerobic activity for a duration of 30 minutes at an intensity of 70% of maximum heart rate or a rating of five on the RPE scale. Note that the duration may be increased as you gain fitness. The overall duration will depend on your current fitness levels. Progress in smaller increments each week as not to overload your body, which may increase your risk of injury. Session two consists of longer, moderate to high intensity interval training in zone two. This session requires you to complete four sets of five minute intervals at between 80 and 90% of maximum heart rate, or between seven and eight on the RPE scale. Session three consists of shorter high intensity interval training in zone three. The session requires you to complete 10 sets of 30 second intervals at 90% of maximum heart rate, or a rating of nine on the RPE scale. There is a one to one work to rest ratio, meaning your recovery is the same length as the interval. The duration and intensity of the intervals may be varied. Different interval durations may also be combined by including 30 second, two minute, and up to five minute intervals into the same session. Similar to resistance training, there is an inverse relationship between intensity and duration. The shorter the interval, the greater the intensity. Circuit training. Here we present a sample circuit training program. This circuit consists of six stations, 30 seconds in duration, 
with 60 seconds rest. Complete beginners may decrease the duration of each station by beginning with 15 seconds before increasing to 30 seconds or more as they progress. The primary goal of this session is local muscular endurance. However, there have been suggestions that circuit training may also improve aerobic capacity in beginners. As your body adapts to your exercise program, you may wish to manipulate some of the variables to further challenge yourself. For example, this may be achieved by increasing the duration of work at each station and decreasing recovery time or simply increasing the number of stations. Weekly program layout. We have described sample programs for all of the topics covered in this short course. But how do we put it all together in a weekly plan to maximize both recovery and benefits? When designing the overall weekly layout of your program, it is important to vary intensity between training days, such that while one day is hard, the following day is easy or moderate in intensity. This is to ensure adequate recovery and promote positive training adaptations while minimizing the risk of injury and overtraining. Here we present a series of sample weekly program layouts, which includes all of the training modalities described in this section for beginners through to the intermediate and advanced trainer. You have now completed this short course, Satanic Conditioning, a personal guide to health and fitness. We described key topics that are integral components of overall health and fitness. These included functional screening, resistance training, endurance training, and nutrition. Finally, we put it all together with our section on program design. Here we described how to take all the topics 
and implement them effectively into your training. You should now have a greater understanding of the essential components of fitness and be confident in implementing these and progressing your own training plan. We thank you for your attention and hope to see you again soon.